Hey everyone and welcome to Sasquatch Theory. In this episode I am camping in my neck of the woods in hopes of capturing some hard evidence. The Ozarks is a large section of forest that stretches from Missouri all the way down into Arkansas. The best way to know if the Sasquatch are around is to sleep outside. I just arrived at the area I had my encounter at. And for those of you that don't know, it was probably around 2019, I was walking back to my house after foraging mushrooms and I saw a bipedal creature stand up and right away I knew it was a Sasquatch. It didn't even take off running. It just walked off casually. The creature looked at me a few times and the best description I can give is it had a round head black almond shaped eyes, flat nose, big brow ridge, and long thin lips. It looks similar to the Hulk and the gorilla, if you could fuse them together. But something that stood out was it had these white stripes on its back, similar to a skunk. So I guess that was like the silver back for a Sasquatch, I guess. But yeah, I'm gonna camp here in the area that happened at, and basically he stood up right there about 20 yards away and he walked over this way. So I found this clear area out in the woods next to my place. And at nighttime, I don't know where they come from, but you can hear them walking by. And you know it's them because you can hear wood knocking, hear limbs breaking the whole nine yards. So yeah, I'm gonna set things up try to get my hammock all laid out ready to go try to get a fire before nightfall and hopefully cook it cook up some food put out some audio recorders and set up the parabolic dish and thermal I know you guys really want to see some of that action so we'll see what happens I haven't had much luck out here I've found a few things here and there so yeah for those who would like to see my new pack, actually I've been working on this pack for years now. I started off with the frame and the belt. And I've been attaching things like Legos basically. And the brand is an Eberly stock. I think it's the F1 frame pack, but here I have the bladder. I'll show you guys. But yeah, bladder's in there. You'll have to trust me. I got my pistol in there, my binoculars. And then the recorders, this is a dry sack, so you can just stuff that thing full all the way to the brim. And in there I have tons of gear. I have enough gear to stay out in the woods for a couple of days. So that's pretty cool. You can also 
put a rifle in here. It's got like a rifle sleeve. And um, you can pretty much put any caliber in there, like a shotgun. But yeah, guys, that's the pack. Hope you guys like it. It's pretty cool. I'm digging it. But yeah, the plan is just to be out here and spend as much time as possible because you never know when something's gonna happen. Last night I heard an awesome vocalization over there. It was almost certainly Sasquatch. I mean, there's nothing else it could be. Definitely got the dogs barking and I started thinking to myself, dang, why didn't I bring, or why didn't I set up an audio recorder out there? Oh wait, you can't do that every day of your life. It's impossible just to review that much audio. But yeah, let's break into the pack. Show you guys what I have going on here. The audio recorders, I brought two. Cover more ground than just my area. We have the JBL speaker that my friend Wendy donated to the channel, which is awesome because I can call blast, listen to music and use my laptop in the outdoors. Also my Ford Ranger has crappy audio so it's nice to bluetooth my phone to a device that sounds good has pretty good bass in it so i'm really digging it but yeah see this dry bag it really it's really big here's the snug pack quilt quilt hammock sorry can't even talk right now snug pack quilt hammock Here's the hammock itself, which is the tropical hammock. That's what it's gonna look like when it's all set up. Sorry guys, I've been doing this one-handed. Yeah, I don't wanna pull that out. The tarp. That's a ground tarp right there. Static V, I don't even know how to say that. The climate static V, basically it's just like a sleeping pad for your hammock. It really helps a lot because you can feel the cold seeping through the bottom of your hammock. And with this, it gives you a lot more comfort. You just blow it up in like two or three seconds and it keeps the cold out from hitting your back. So it really insulates you. All right, here's the cocoon. This thing I have been waiting years to get. I just haven't had a chance to get it. But yeah, this thing is like a burrito for a hammock. Turns you into a taco. Yeah, it's like a sleeping bag for a hammock. It goes around your hammock and keeps you super warm. It's comfortable. And I think it's gonna do good with what I'm trying to do with Sasquatch Theory. It's gonna be awesome, guys. Really digging this. And yeah, like I said, this is the area that I saw the creature. I was walking back down my driveway after picking chanterelle mushrooms. And I looked to my left a couple times, didn't really see much, thought I heard a noise, kept walking, and then the creature stood up. And when I looked over the first time, it just looked like a stump, like a black stump that you would see out in the woods, you know, so. Didn't really look like much. Oh yeah, this is the chair. I'm not really liking this chair and I'll tell you guys after I unpack it. But yeah, set this up against a tree because it keeps wanting to fall over. But yeah, this lid right here, like I said, it's got my pistol and my binoculars. It has the Smalley webbing on there so you can attach more stuff to it like your knife or other gear like flashlights, whatever you want. Bunch of bags. We got a Shetty here and the Ontario Axe. I don't know if you guys can see that. Oh, I can't remember what it's called. Something Ontario. It's been years, sorry guys. One more item I wanna get out of here. All right, here's the other tarp. This goes over the hammock and I'll show you guys that when it's unpacked as well. All right, let's get everything set up, ready to go.
I've never used this, or I haven't used it yet, and I just got it like two weeks ago. It's like a mat. It's like a mat. It is a mat that I bought off of Amazon. And I don't know if it's good or if it's a piece of crap, so we're gonna try it. Looks like it's pretty good material. All right, let's set up the hammock. Comes in this neat little bag right here. And then it has this pouch. Really cool colors. I don't like the way other hammock companies make everything pink, light blue, orange, red. That really stands out. And it's really easy for people to spot out your stuff and come in and steal it when you're not there. So I like to blend in with nature. And I know those colors are meant for survival in case you get lost, but I don't plan on getting lost. I don't know who goes out in the woods and plans on getting lost, but you should be prepared to blend into your surroundings and adapt to nature. That's the way I look at it. So it comes with the hammock, of course, and then you have these straps that are really cool. Basically, these straps, you just loop around a tree and use the notch that you desire. Yeah, you want to use this pad for the bark so it doesn't destroy the bark on the tree. I really like that idea. Put this one up a little bit higher. Okay. Yeah. You guys won't be filming when you do this so your hammock won't get dirty like mine. A little bit. I think that's right. Last time I jumped into my other snug pack when I slept on the other side of the property last year, I jumped in it and it like, like spun me around and like slapped me down on the ground. It really sucked. But I was able to like hold up my camera when that happened. So I didn't tell you guys about that. It took me a year to finally tell you guys, but yeah, that's what happened. It didn't hurt, just a little bit. I don't know if I did this right. I think this is right. Like I said, I don't use hammocks too much. Just here and there. I feel like it could go down a lot more. Like it's pulling up between my legs. All right. I just need to learn how to use a hammock, right? That should... No, that won't work. set up ready to go check that out that's pretty cool i don't think i set it up correctly but this will definitely work for what i'm trying to do here in missouri all right we got that chair deal it's pretty easy to set up these all connect into the inserts magnetically and voila you got a chair frame Gonna go get firewood. Well, I'm freezing to death. Mm. 
but I'm having a great time. Almost done setting up camp and that's normally what takes me the longest. They also sell a pillow that works great for camping. Whether you're in a tent or in a hammock, I love it. I got these straps for bow hunting and they're meant for hanging your bow and your gear around the tree. And it's made by HME Hunting Made Easy is what it says anyways. <clears throat> so basically you just loop this around the tree And it's super light, really easy to carry. You can hang a lot of your gear. I've hung my backpack that was completely loaded, full of gear on these little hooks, which is actually really cool. But yeah, it can hold a lot of weight. These hooks are awesome. That strap is heavy duty, so you don't have to worry about things falling and breaking but yeah this is the woods around my place i'm not going to say it's deep woods but it's enough woods for these boogers to get in yeah pretty cool guys so yeah here's the hammock everything's set up i love it there's the pillow right there. Hopefully I sleep comfortably tonight. It's gonna be so cool. I'm excited. All right, let's get the parabolic set up. We'll be looking down towards that creek bottom. And what I'm planning on doing is setting up one audio recorder pod over there to the left. I'll be here in the center monitoring, monitoring this side. And then way down there where the creek goes, pours into the Merrimack River, I'm gonna set up another audio recorder. So basically one on my left, one on my right, and I'll be the center. And basically I'm set up on top of all these ridges, all these finger ridges that basically all join down here into this creek bottom. And it's the same with the other side. All those ridges seem to join right here into this like, into this little central hub area. It's a good spot to hunt to find wildlife and get away from people. But yeah, let me show you guys right there. See that cedar tree? That thing was pushed down years ago, but it's aiming towards a lake. There's a big lake over that way. Oh, I'm not gonna say it's huge, but it's pretty good size. It's full of fish. And when it rains, it pours into this creek and this creek just roars with water. I'm excited. When I seen that Sasquatch, he went that way. Like he quickly disappeared when he got into these cedar trees, like quick. Okay, we have the thermal set up, ready to go. Audio recorder and the parabolic microphone. And this time we have a good tripod. I wanna give a special shout out to the half inch wrench crew, which got me this tripod because my old one broke and they were kind enough to just buy one out, of, out on a limb. So thank you. It's been pretty windy out today, so. Parabolic may not be the best tool, but you can still hear things. It's not a constant wind. It'll blow and then calm down. You can hear the highway back there and the wind of course, but I'm not really seeing any heat signatures. I'm not hearing anything either. All right. 
right, we'll pause that. Pause the audio. We'll have to bust it out when we hear something. The good thing is we got it ready to go. If something comes up, it's right there, ready to use. The plan is to set up some audio recorders and I think I know some pretty good areas. I've been hearing some strange sounds that way and down that way, like I said earlier. So the plan is to go about 150 yards away from camp and find a good spot to hang this audio recorder. All right, let's get to work, guys. I don't know if they're in here, but I really want to find out. The best way to do that is to spend time in the area and see if they come out. I've been setting up my parabolic dish inside at the house at nighttime, and I've been filming a lot of critters, but I haven't got any sign that the Sasquatch are in the area, so. Really curious to find out. All right. We're going to gift some of this Skippy's peanut butter and it's the super chunk, extra chunky. See if they like it. We also have some tuna in oil and I've already cracked one open just to let the smell out and see if they they come by. We'll see you guys. Oh yeah, that oil is spilling out. And I put two of them here. It's peanut butter. I know they love it. And I'll set up the audio recorder somewhere here in the area. There's like a drainage ditch over here and the deer really love to travel that area. And when the Sasquatch were here years ago, they made this giant structure there the next structure with some arches. There's multiple arches and it didn't really seem like the tree that was down did all that damage. And I've experienced a lot, of, a lot of activity there. So I think if I hang that audio recorder up on a tree as high as I can get it, I might have some luck if something goes off tonight. Just because if I don't set up the audio recorder and something does happen, I'm gonna be kicking myself in the butt and everybody's gonna say, why didn't you set up some audio, so. Had a lot of action here, guys. It's a really cool place. That looks like an X, but it's not. That other tree's further away. All right, so here's the audio recorder that I use, and this is the pod that it goes inside of. Basically what this is, is a piece of PVC piping and the lid right there with a hanger. All of this you can find at the hardware store. I use some camo paint that bonds to like plastic. And inside, right here, You have the foam, the spray foam. I filled that up just because everything else wasn't working and the audio recorders kept falling out. But the audio recorder that I use is the Olympus DM720. Okay. And that's all it is right there. I have them numbered and I have the SD cards numbered. And basically it just takes one little battery and I have these wind screens to help block the wind out they don't really work too well just because the mics are super sensitive they definitely help but when it's windy it's just gonna be windy so you want to run these when the weather's nice and you know it's gonna be optimal for audio recording but yeah basically we want to turn this on with this little side dial. 
Okay, so what we want to do is hit menu, go down to, I believe it's this one. Oops. You want to go to timer, record, and then you go into this preset and you make sure everything's right, your time. Um, we'll start at six, we'll start at 6.15 p.m. and then we'll go, we'll go to 7 a.m. And I'm going to save it on the SD card and folder A. You guys can set this to whatever you want. And now what you do is you just turn it off. And it will turn on on its own and start recording on the time and day that you set it to. So we'll put the recorder back into the tube, make sure it doesn't turn on on its own. But see how much it sticks out of the bottom? Like you got about an inch there that's sticking out and it has three microphones. So you got this bottom one and then the two on the side. So they're not inside the tube, but yet still protected if rain drops. And then you just tighten over You tighten this windshield onto there and once you get that fastened to it, it's kind of a pain. You just stuff the rest inside of there and you are ready to go. This thing will record every day at 6.30 p.m. I believe is what I set it to or 6.15 until 7 in the morning. Alright, let's try it out. This is actually an area that I found some sticks stacked up on a tree and they're pretty big limbs. They didn't seem like they fell from the tree, but I turned on this tri-field EMF detector and I got some really high readings. So let's see what we got today. on this light. Set it to RF, see what that does. Okay, so it definitely spikes up against. Whoa, it's going up. The heck's wrong with me? No, I think it's this microphone. Oh, it is spiking here. Check that out. Thought I saw something white flash. I don't know what that was. Yeah, this is the spot that I get a really high reading at. I don't know why.
Yeah, this is crazy. I don't know why. Check this out, guys. I don't know what it is about this specific area, but this thing loves to go off here. Yeah, right here. Is there a portal here? If there's something here, make it spike. Specifically Sasquatch. Nope. I mean, it's spiking, but let's see, watch. It's definitely not the camera. I left the camera over there earlier. Let's see, look. There is a weird energy here. I don't know how to explain it. Thought I heard a whistle. See, watch. I walk away from that spot and it drops. And that's directly towards that structure over there. There's like a tree structure over there. Sorry guys, I'm doing this one-handed. Wild. Okay, I'm gonna step back from this area and continue the research, but I'll keep note of that. It's very unusual. All right, let's continue. And we'll go to the other spot where I heard vocalization last night and hopefully something pops off there today. I have full expectations that something will just because typically when the Sasquatch are around, they'll stick around the area for a few days, a few weeks, possibly a few months and even years. So let's get to it. All right, now I'm getting ready to walk past camp. And man, it really blends in. I'm really digging this camp setup that I got going on and hopefully it keeps me warm tonight. It's supposed to get pretty chilly. As always, when it gets dark in the winter here in Missouri. But yeah, we'll continue to travel down in the woods and go to the right side this time and set up the other audio recorder in hopes that we capture something. Never know, guys. You have to try. This is the direction that the Sasquatch went after I seen him. He quickly disappeared into the thick cedar trees and the oaks. So it was maybe a, an encounter that lasted like anywhere from five to eight seconds, maybe. But I know what I saw. So right here in this little area, you can see my house right there through the pine thicket. And it's just a little section of pine woods, but there's all kinds of Sasquatch structures in there. But it seems like they've made these little structures to watch me from the woods or watch the place, I guess. Basically they appeared after I seen the juvenile, he started putting up structures and they started coming up around the house, so. Vocalization that I heard is just right over there. And I've had all kinds of encounters and sightings in this area, so much that many won't believe. And even if you believe in Bigfoot, you wouldn't believe how many encounters I've had.
but yeah, we're getting close, guys. You can see like the separation of habitat. You have like cedars and pines, and then behind me you have like a bunch of white oaks and cedars. I don't know if you can really tell on camera, but yeah, we're almost there, guys. Yeah, they love to come in here and crush cedar trees. There's a big creek bottom down there. And the deer love it here, the turkey love it. But I noticed there's a lot of owls in this specific little area. So we'll try to get in here as quietly as possible and set this thing up. You can see this cedar tree. I think they laid it out. I'm not for sure, but this is where that Sasquatch went after I seen him get up and walk away. He went down this way. Look at that, push down uphill. Come on guys. There's the creek bottom right there. It actually has water in it right now. Look at this cedar. Here's another cedar. You would think it, it would fall downhill, not uphill. There's the other cedar over there. There's this one. Here's another cedar. These are all older, but still. All right, I'm gonna set up the audio recorder right there in that tree. It'd be a perfect wind block. And this is where I've been hearing the vocalizations down here in this creek bottom. I've heard all kinds of weird stuff throughout my life down here. Doesn't happen all the time. Kind of happens like a shooting star, but it does happen. Sun's getting ready to go down soon, so I'm trying to get as much work done as possible before I start eating. If you're a member, you already know where this spot is because I showed you guys in the membership and I told you guys what happened that one night when I hit him with the spotlight and how many Sasquatch I seen that one night. All right, so this recorder is a little bit different. It's the DM620, which is the older model and it takes two batteries instead of one, but it sounds a little bit different and I kind of like it. So we'll get it started. Oh yeah, this is another pod that I made and I used stealth tape. I think it's called Stealth Outdoors. But they make this awesome tape and it sticks really good. It's soft and it's meant to keep your hunting gear warm and from clinking up against other things. go to Mike, oops, go there and go down to timer. It is on. Day, every day, time, let's start at 619. And we'll stop at 6.30, actually. Styrofoam looks nasty, but it does the job. The last time I put it up in the cedar tree, some animal got into it and it fell down on the ground. I was real disappointed. All right. 
right. Finally made it back to camp. Should have brought some water with me. But I'm excited to cook some food and get ready for the night. Cool. So we're gonna start a fire, small fire, because it's gonna get kind of chilly tonight and try to get some food ready. I brought some salmon, some Spanish rice, and we'll try to get that smell out in the air. Hopefully that builds up the curiosity. If you guys like my new camping setup, let me know down in the comments. Let me know how you think I could improve it, what I could do better, and what you guys like specifically. What do you guys want to see? Let me know. I'm really hoping the JBL speaker works tonight. That thing is awesome. It sounds so good and I really appreciate the person that donated that to me. It's awesome and I don't know what to say. Thank you. We'll try to do some call blasts with it tonight and see see what we can find see what comes up right I also brought the O light this thing is awesome for camping it's got a magnet on it and it magnetically charges so you just slap that thing on there and it'll charge it up but there's setting number one there's the red light of course it's gonna be brighter at night then it blinks So yeah, that's what we got. We're gonna try to walk around with this at nighttime and see if it brings out the curiosity of the Sasquatch. Of course, it's so I can see at nighttime, at nighttime as well, so. I wanna get like three of these, three or four of them. Q, I'm excited guys. I heard some owls going off in the direction that I set up the audio recorder. Who knows, maybe it's them warning each other that I'm over here in the area. But it seems like this fog just came out of nowhere and I don't think it's smoke. It doesn't smell it doesn't smell like smoke, but who knows it could be. Maybe there's a fire somewhere. But all of a sudden everything got real foggy. But yeah, I'm getting hungry. How about you guys? I think it's about time to start cooking and get that smell into the air. Let's see what happens. I haven't heard any wood knocks or any whoops, anything strange, no tree breaks. Nothing. So it's probably gonna be another one of those nights, but I wanted you guys to see you know, what my place looks like, what I do, and kind of where I've been going with all of this, so. I really want to get some activity so bad, but not to the point where I die or something bad happens. Why do I want to, why do I want to experience activity? Um, it kind of reconfirms in my brain that these creatures exist. I know what I've seen, I know, and I know what I've experienced, but after a while, when the activity fizzles out, it's like, okay, what's going on here? Everything's too normal. But yeah, the only way you're gonna get activity is by spending time in the area, 
hopefully they'll come around. I think they really like to spend time on those ridges and look across from ridge to ridge. I think they can see like a turkey, similar to an eagle. They can see really far. All right, my other burner is not gonna work very well just because the wind. Looks like it's gonna be a windy night, guys. Ooh, I might have to use the other burner. I was thinking this one had two, but it only has one. Okay, that's fine. We can use this as a table right here. Cool. Basically, you just use this butane fuel, this canister, and leave, you pop it into there. Yeah, just like that, hopefully. We we'll wanna blow ourselves up. There we go. There's the flashlight. This thing is bright. I bought that at Walmart. I think it's called a Swiss. I'm not sure, but I believe so. Oh yeah. Pelly woodpeckers are going off. It's a good sign. Wildlife is out, guys. I've I seen a lot of deer tracks today. There were some squatters up the road that have been here for years, ever since the Sasquatch showed up. About They showed up about six months after I started having my encounters and kind of pushed everything away. Well, us and the neighbors band together and drove the crackheads away. But yeah, here's the new cooking pot I have. It's a Stanley. It's really cool. Dry bag for the backpack. But yeah, this, this salmon is blowing out there. The smell of it anyways. It's gonna be awesome, guys. I say that all the time. It's gonna be awesome, guys. It's gonna be awesome. Nothing happens. All right, so in this pot, we have Coleman burner. Attach that. Wow, that worked excellent. Try to get some water out of here. We want about two cups about two cups right there. Try to find a flat surface here, as flat as possible. Turn this little dial, no? Yeah, there we go. feel like this thing's tightened up enough. Okay, there we go. Turn the dial. Oh, shit. Something don't feel right about that. What the heck is that? I'm not liking that. What the hell? Please do not do that again. I don't like Walmart crap. It just does not feel right. All right, we'll just roll with it. Hopefully it doesn't blow up. Oh, that's kind of blackened, but hopefully it works out. Mm. 
Yeah, I think the Sasquatch really like fish. One time I gifted them rainbow trout that a game warden gave me that she took away from someone else and kind of looked old and they were in a plastic bag. They weren't very big, so I gifted them to the Sasquatch. They didn't go to waste, but I did it right in the middle of the day. I came back about an hour later and the trout was gone. I'm not saying it was Sasquatch, but I put it right here where we're camping and boom, they took it pretty darn quick. I think that the Sasquatch that are around here, they came from Merrimack Springs, which is a fishing park. I'm not saying they live there, but I think that's the area that they, come, they came from. There's a lot of spring water there, the Merrimack River's there, and a ton of trout fish. So I definitely think it would be an area for them to be in. Man, this burner is kind of tripping me out. Yeah, I think the owls are going off, which is pretty neat. I don't know if that thing's burning right, so try to figure that out. Let me know if you guys see anything. Zoom past the smoke there. You'd have to use manual focus for this because it just wants to dial in on the trees. Yeah, I'm really liking this Stanley cooking pot. It's working out great. Love it. Oh, don't tip, don't tip, don't tip. That actually turned out really darn good. Loving the Spanish rice, the dish set. Really feeling good about all the gear I purchased. I made sure and started a fire before it got dark because it seems to be impossible to start a fire after the sun goes down. But yeah, in this area, to me, it seems like the Sasquatch are around more in the summer, and that's probably everywhere, just because there's more foliage out in the forest, and it just seems to be a sufficient time for them to be out in the woods with all the wildlife. You know, there's a ton of bugs, mushrooms, animals, you know. People aren't out in the woods as much in the summer just because of the ticks and the sea ticks. And sea ticks are a little bitty, but they swarm on you like, in the thousands. Try some of the salmon out. I'm eating this stuff Taliban style, guys. Straight out of the dish. It's a joke, by the way. I notice when I make jokes like that, some people take it super serious. They're like, how dare you? How could you say that? Oh, I ate all of that. Like I said, it was extra blackened. I don't know what happened. <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna dump these scraps a little bit further out that way. Whatever animals come up straight down there, I'll have a clear view. All right, so there's camp and down there's the creek bottom. I'm gonna, set, I'm gonna dump this probably, yeah. 
it's probably about 50 60 yards maybe a little more but yeah whatever's around should smell that salmon come eat it even if it's coyote raccoon fox whatever give it another 10 minutes and it'll be completely dark outside the wind seems like it died down so that should be a pretty good thing having trouble keeping this fire going I guess there's too much moisture in the air. My back's killing me. I've been nonstop since I got here. So I'm just gonna chill out and relax. Film anything cool if it happens. Hopefully I don't get attacked by crackheads and bums. Just kidding guys. Oh yeah, those pushed over cedars that I showed you guys earlier. Sorry, there's one right here. You can't see it because it's facing us, but it's pushed down. That's had this stick on top of it for a long time. I think it's one of their day watcher spots. And again, you can see it's right at the edge of the yard. One thing that I think tips off, tips me off that the Sasquatch are around is when the neighbor's dogs start barking you can tell something like triggers the dogs and they just start going nuts another thing that i've noticed is when i camp in a sasquatch area like this set up a fire cook food spend time there i'll come back later on and i notice all these structures set up and arches and x's put up and it's like they're telling me that you know they're watching me or possibly to stay out of their area I've noticed that in several spots. Eventually they let you know. You just gotta be out there. And you get tidbits of information that you put together and figure out, I guess. I don't know. It's just pieces of the puzzle that you're <laughs> trying to figure out. Yeah, it's nice to be out here again. I will admit, I'm getting a little creeped out just because I'm literally camping in the spot that I seen a Sasquatch. And I know they come at nighttime. I've had it happen a handful of times. I just hope I'm ready if they show up. And if they do, hopefully they're kind. Hopefully they're not in a bad mood or pissed off that I'm camping in their spot. The only way to know or the only way to find out is to be out here. Hopefully nothing bad happens. You just gotta hope for the best. And after all, we are just camping, right? What are the odds that something bad will happen? All right, the owls are starting to kick off. We'll give them a little hoot ourselves. The dogs went off when that owl kicked off. What the heck was that? Did you hear that? It was like a... What the heck? What was that? Who you knows what that was? Could have been a squatch. Really weird, like a grunt, like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like that. That's what I heard, but I don't know if it was like the neighbors. You know, I'm like maybe a truck taking off or something. Who knows? Kind of freaked me out though. Come to think of it, actually, when the dogs were going off earlier, I heard a limb break right there where I heard that groan, that thing moan or whatever the heck it was. Very creepy. Maybe they're around me, guys. Temperature's definitely starting to drop and it's getting cold. So I'm just bundling up, sitting next to the fire and hoping that I hear some vocalizations from a distance. 
as it gets later and later, I'm kind of more anxious about having a sighting or an, an encounter. Most of my encounters happen during the day, so nighttime is not, not the time to want to have an encounter. And that's what we're doing here today. It's hard to tell if I'm hearing things around me or if it's just the wind. Man, my eyeballs are burning. I think the smoke is just drying out my eyes. Come on, Sasquatch. Where you guys at? I thought I saw some, like some lights or something. Possible eye shine. Well, this fire would do the trick. Definitely light up their eyes if they're around. And yep, somebody in the comments said it's supposed to be really windy tonight. It sure is. Dang it. It got really windy out, but I'm gonna stay out here no matter what. I'm hoping the wind calms down tonight and hopefully the wildlife comes out as well, but it's still early in the year, guys, and it's just nice to camp out without all the bugs and snakes up. All right, like I said, I got this O light and I want to try it out. Maybe it'll draw the attention of the Sasquatch. Let's start off with the bright light. Just like that. I don't want to go too bright. But yeah, basically. Let me get closer to you guys. Yeah, this light kind of looks like an orb. And that's what I seen one night. Just walk around the woods a little bit. See if that draws in the attention of the Sasquatch. What do you guys think? Do you think it'll work? I do. That's kind of what it looked like just floating through the woods. Wasn't my imagination. I didn't want to go near it. I'm glad I didn't because the Native Americans say that if you do, it'll be your demise. We're just walking through the woods casually. Whoa. Oh, stepped on a chair. <clears throat> There's my fire. It's pitch black. All right, I'm gonna set up for night vision and we'll see what happens. I'll use the thermal for a little bit, but I'll have the night vision set up just in case something comes out. And yeah, I'll probably use it because nothing's gonna happen anyways and I can get more footage with it. Okay, I think they're here. <clears throat> I really do think they're here. Something is coming. I heard a limb snap, holy crap. I don't think a deer would be doing that. Something's over there. All right, let's try to turn on the night vision. Let me pause this for a second. Yeah, something's over there. I could hear it walking around. Hear that? Dang, stupid wind. 
something clipped, like a limb clipped. Of course, the wind has to start blowing at the worst possible time. Thank you, wind. I wonder what that was. I bet there's a Sasquatch right over there right now. Oh my gosh. That... Yeah, there's something right there. Something's running up on us. Okay, whatever it is, just stopped right there. Dang, I should have grabbed my gun. Dang it. Okay, whatever it is, it's running around us. Dude, I might have to, like, get something. Yeah, I'm gonna have to grab my gun. Whatever it is, right there. I don't play that. Okay. I'm just really freaked out because this is where I seen the Sasquatch and like, I don't think a possum would snap a limb like that. Yeah, that really freaked me out. Don't do that, possum. You gotta, you gotta quit doing that, Dillo. Yeah, he's over there by my chair. Wow, that freaked me out. No, I heard a limb break. That that little animal came from over there, but there was something over here which like really tripped me out. I did not like that at all. Not one bit. Okay. Cool. Let's record. Yo, what's your deal, dude? You really freaked me out. Oh my gosh, I thought you were Sasquatch. Don't do that again, bro. Gosh. Well, over there, I heard a limb break. Alright, we'll scan the area with the thermal. Make sure there's nothing around us. And if there is, I know I'm going to be spooked. Because I'm typically spooked when the activity pops off and I don't know how to react. I don't like that. So I'm trying to figure out how to grow some balls and um, know how to react when critical situations unfold, basically. But yeah, there's that little critter. He's just hanging out. Oh, he smells that salmon. All right, guys, it is working. That possum is Heading towards the salmon pile, that food that I dumped earlier. All right, there's that chair. I, I sit in it all the time, year round, and listen for Sasquatch. But yeah, let's let's look around, see if we can find any heat signatures. Oh yeah, uh -huh. there's something over there. It's like I don't know what that is. Could be like oh no, there is. There is totally something over there, guys, and it is coming up the hill. Oh, there's like multiple heat signatures popping up. What are you guys? Little critters are coming out, I guess. Good deal. Oh, whoa, that one just like disappeared. Sorry, guys, that, this device has to like recalibrate every now and then that was kind of weird the one over there that was that was unusual sir i tried to point didn't work out so well all right guys we got some heat signatures definitely weird one shot behind a tree super fast they were pretty low to the ground like little critters so we can't say they're sasquatch but there's definitely something unusual going on animals are coming out tonight guys and as you can see, we're surrounded by forest, but I'm close to my house at the same time, so there's that fire. I think that's bad for it. Let's not do that again. All 
All right, guys, we definitely have, we definitely have animals moving around. So it's looking good, guys. It's looking good. Basically what I'm gonna do is just scan the forest, try to find a heat signature. Wow, these trees are lit up because of this fire. They're over here. Oh man, that, oh my knee. Guys, I'm getting old. There, my knee, I'm gonna have to stand up. Being crouched like this is killing me. Did I tell you guys it's a lot of work Sasquatching? People think, people think that I'm just messing around. It's a lot of work. It really is. I mean, have you guys ever went camping? Have you guys ever filmed your camp? Just do that or add all that into wildlife research, filming and camping all at the same time while trying to cook and take care of yourself as well. It's a lot of work, guys. It's a pain in the ass carrying um, camera gear around and setting it up for every single angle for everything you do. Just imagine for every single move you made in your life, you had to set up a camera, a tripod and everything. It doesn't sound like a lot of work, but it is. I mean, getting a piece of paper and a pencil out can be a lot of work, right? Right, we all went to school, so anything is a lot of work. But yeah, I got my pistol here. I'm well armed in case another Dillo comes up. I'm pretty sure I just heard a whoop. It could have been a dog, but man, that really sounded like a whoop. I have to change the setting here. I really like to put this thermal on the ultramarine setting. I don't know, I think everything just looks better. Good thing is it, it's not consistently windy. The wind does die down. So you have an opportunity to listen and you can hear what's moving around you. All right, I'm scanning the woods. Hate it when that thing recalibrates, but you know, I'm looking for any heat signatures. Up there, something. What do we got? Oh man, it looks like a skunk or something. Is that like a possum or something? that thing has to recalibrate every time. Keep looking around. There we go. Just try to find any heat signature we can. And then we can hone in on whatever it is. Oh, they got something down there. Definitely something big, guys. Oh my gosh, what is that? That's got to be a deer. Yeah, that's got to be a deer. Totally a deer. Oh yeah, we got some deer coming out, guys. Told you guys there was deer out here. How cool is that? Well, we got wildlife guys coming out of the creek bottom. That's where the Sasquatch come out of. Oh, what the heck? Get away from my camp, man. Oh, it's coming over here for sure. So we're surrounded by wildlife, guys. That deer is just frozen. No, something's wrong. Can't smell me because the wind's blowing in my face.
All right, it seems like when I sit down, animals come out. When I stand up, they disappear. So they don't mind the fire. They just don't like me. They're like, hey, you, go away. Quit messing with us. We don't like you. All right, I'll check behind my camp. If you guys think Sasquatch Theory sucks, let me know in the comments down below. And tell me why. Tell me why. Alright, I'm scanning around. I'm recording, by the way, on the thermal. I'm scanning around, trying to find some heat signatures. I had better luck when I was out there. Let's try that again. Yeah, I think there's still one over there. I heard a limb snap again in that same spot where I heard the... Mm -hmm. Or like, I don't know, it was like a gorilla moan. It was pretty unusual, guys. But yeah, there's something over there. I'll try to refrain from using the night vision too much. I don't want to scare them off if that's the case, but I have the thermal. So we'll try to use both if they come up. But it seems like they're trying to work up the courage to get up here. Like, they're watching me from a distance and they're letting me know it, but they're getting closer and closer. Still got that little critter around camp. Definitely can smell the food and just trying to come in for some more. I mean, I did cook salmon, so that was the plan to attract all kinds of wildlife. These trees are being warmed up by the fire near the camp. Yeah, just seeing if anything is curious and coming in. That's the goal, that's the plan. So yeah, I'm just sitting here enjoying myself. Hoping my audio recorder picks up some, some activity. I know some, some stuff has happened tonight, but the wind's been blowing, so. I doubt it's picked up too much. We just need some some crazy sounds to pop off. Sorry guys, the smoke's like blowing in my face and I'm trying to keep my pants from catching on fire. <laughs> I come out here all the time and hike and I haven't had activity like I did in 2019 through 2021. Um, they could be here, that's the test though. I'm trying to figure out if they're around in March or if they only come around in May, July, you know, time frame. There's been a lot of deer here lately, so hoping they come out to hunt. That's Highway 19 over there. The wind is relentless. It doesn't seem like it's gonna give up. <laughs> That's all right though. I think it was wild how the possum found that salmon I dumped out there so fast. And then I was looking out there and it seemed like there were some raccoons, some possums, but one like hid behind a tree like super fast. Like it knew I was watching them, which was unusual. I'm getting ready to go back down there and scan the woods with my thermal. It's kind of open on this finger ridge that leads down to this creek bottom. 
and you can overlook the entire ridge over there on the other side. Yeah, I keep hearing noises straight out that way. Down there where I put that recorder where the cedars were all pushed over. I mean, they could have fell naturally, but yeah, that's where I'm hearing the sounds at. There's a lot of people over there that have like turkeys, ducks, chickens, and another neighbor over here that has some chickens as well. And over here, some of the neighbors have some cattle and stuff, so yeah. We're kind of in the middle, it's just all woods around us. Somebody in the comments says to watch out that David Politis warns about people camping by themselves. And that's the test, you know, if I go missing and I end up on a poster, you guys know what happened. I mean, it's all documented. So there's some evidence backing all that up if, if I do go missing. But, you know, there would be a story written that, oh, Miguel just got lost and took off his clothes and just started walking around the woods in the middle of the night, died of hypothermia. His body was found two miles away from his campsite. Never know, I kind of think it's like UFO abductions. But at the same time, I feel like the Sasquatch are connected with the UFOs because out here I'll be seeing these lights up in the sky and I mean, they're like orbs floating through the air. They're definitely not a plane. And at the same time, you'll hear like, trees being pushed over like snapped in the woods and it's like whoa I'm seeing these lights up in the air and there's activity out in the woods like I don't know which way to run with the film because there's too much chaos it's hard to say if it's connected but at the same time you got two completely unusual things that should not exist that are happening in the same location at the same time so I have to consider that I haven't been seeing lights lately I haven't been having Bigfoot activity lately. Maybe it's a great time to camp out here when there's no activity. And that's the wild thing is people from like Missouri think it's crazy that Sasquatch is even conceivable. You know, like most people think it's a joke, but the rea reality is, you know, these creatures are around people. I don't care if you live like in Rolla, Missouri, Springfield, um, St. Clair, and you think, oh, I live too close to I-44. The truth is these creatures can get right up at the edge of the woods in town. So people that live like, I don't know, at a dead end road right outside of town that is nothing but woods in their backyard. You're susceptible to experiencing Sasquatch activity. That's just how it works. You don't have to be like in the river scenic view areas of Missouri, of the Ozarks, you know, in the deepest remote parts. Everybody says, you need to go here. This is like the deepest part. That's where they'll be. But the truth is they can be anywhere. And it's just really hard to determine where they're going to be the best way to know is has there been activity there is it consistent you know that's when you want to hit it up oh, this smoke is like burning my eyes why are you blowing right towards me oh my gosh sorry guys smoke is just burning me out I just heard something snap behind me and the wind wasn't really blowing that hard. Pretty sure I just heard a crow go off over there. Like, ah! What the heck? But yeah, that was a loud snap, like crack. Pretty close to the house and I mean, typically that's where they come from, so 
we have had some strange activity, nothing definitive yet, but I'm sitting out here freezing my butt off, waiting for some activity to happen. Wishing Les Stroud was here with me and we could crack a cold one, talk about Bigfoot and I could listen to his camping stories. I know he's got a lot of wild stories and it'd be cool to meet Les Stroud one day. Who knows, maybe we'll do a podcast in the future. Right when you think something's happening, the wind just picks up, goes nuts. But you never know, a female Sasquatch could walk right out of the woods and be like, hey boys, be like, hey, it's just me. And then the next thing you know, she takes me off to, to her cave out in the wilderness. And it didn't turn out that I was missing. It turned out that I found a, a female Sasquatch and came back with three little juveniles. <laughs> See what my battery's on. Oh, it's on 28%. Great. Typically, Sasquatch like to come out in the middle of the night after you already did your video when you're sleeping to scare the crap out of you. Pretty sure that's how this is going to work. And the wind's going to blow. 20 miles an hour plus and the smoke's gonna blow right in my face and every piece of fire that comes out of the campfire is gonna go right in my face as well oh my gosh I'm trying to make light of the situation guys I want to move closer to the fire but it's just like Oh yeah, I can feel the heat from here. Whoa, the wind's blowing directly at me. And I can feel the heat, it feels nice. Minus the smoke and smoldering ashes. Did you guys know that California is possibly getting ready to break off and fall into the ocean? <laughs> Hopefully that doesn't happen, but that's what scientists are saying and they're theorizing that part of California could just slip off and fall right into the ocean and if that does happen it's going to cause all kinds of havoc so if you live in California you best get yourself over in the coast inland sorry freezing can't think I had mind freeze a new thing when Sasquatch are around my mind freezes and I can't think I'm like <laughs> did I tell you guys that I love you all every single one of you I want to tell you guys that if you didn't already have a family and a home I take you in as my children come here all 50,000 of you you can sleep underneath my tarp. <laughs> it's not big enough, but if we huddle together, it'll be one mass of warmth. And we'll just have more eyes out there for the Sasquatch. All right, I'm going to pause this because I'm just rambling. I don't see anything. Just the windy forest. Looking behind the camera. I'm left handed so I don't like using my red eye. I'm not red eye dominant. But I guess I can train myself. Well, let me just learn how to do this thing 
use this thing with both eyes open. Oh, that's hard to do. Hard to adjust, guys. Freezing. So cold. I'm trying to hold this thing still, but I'm shaking. <sighs> Come on, Miguel. Step it up. Get in there, Rocky. They say the only way to achieve is to do something. So I'm like trying to do it. I'm trying to get out here, guys. I heard something really messed up down here loud would knock. I wonder if those are still the deer. If that's the deer, that deer's been in the same place for about 45 minutes. And I find that hard to believe. Seems like there's another heat signature right there. They gotta be deer. But I did hear wood knock down there. Could be deer just batted right there. I mean, they are white tail, so. Maybe they decided to bed right next to my camp, right next to the fire, me talking and everything. dogs are going off too. That's why I stood up and started filming because I noticed this dog over here was going nuts. But overall I would say this night investigation is going pretty good. What do you guys think? Do you guys think that's a deer just bedded right there? There's two of them. This one kind of seems upright. That one right there. What do you guys think? Doesn't that seem... squatchy? It's just really hard to tell. We'll try to switch to a different mode. See what stands out the most. But yeah, my talking does not seem to be bothering whatever is down there. It seems to be piquing the curiosity of whatever that is. What are you? Oh yeah, you can really see the shapes now with black hut. Yeah. Wow, look at that. Look at that. Oh no. Look the black. Check that. Yeah, it just seems like two creatures down there in the creek bottom. But yeah, look at that one. That one really has me interested. Look at that. Let me whistle at it. No, no, no. Just let them come. I don't want to do anything that Sasquatch do to them. But yeah, it could be a Sasquatch just laying there. Most likely it's a deer. But it could be a Sasquatch. And then... Where'd the other one go? See? See what I mean? Just hid behind the tree. Oh, oh. What do we got? Hmm. 
Where'd your friend go? Oh wow. I think it is a deer just laying down. Oh wow. I just saw the head move. How cool. What the heck? Oh yeah. That is so cool. Whatever that is. Well, these deer don't seem to mind me. They're like, hey, you're pretty cool. We're just going to chill out. There's my chair that I use. Huh. I'll try to light that thing up with night vision here in a second. See what we got. Yeah, there's my camp. There's behind my camp. With this setting, it kind of looks like daytime. Huh. I don't know what that is. Keep an eye out, guys. Does it move for what? Yeah, that looks like a big foot. What the heck? Kinda hoping that's a deer. Why would a deer just be laying there? Could be the juvenile. What are you doing, buddy? Hmm. Yeah, that looks squatchy as heck. Probably a deer. It's always a deer, turkey, or a hog, bear, until it's a sasquatch. Right? Hmm. Interesting. Maybe they're waiting for me to go to bed. That other one disappeared. I never saw it again. Maybe it laid down too. It's creepy, guys. What do you think? If you were a deer, wouldn't you be able to hear me right now? Maybe you can't hear me with, like, the wind. This deer's deaf. For a second, whatever that was, it looked like it was walking towards me. That ain't no Sasquatch. Sasquatch don't exist. I know what people say. You gotta be the only guy out in this area right now doing this. Alright. Alright. Good deal. So... We're gonna light this place up with the thermal. Let's see what this creature is. Hmm. 
Oh yeah, it's definitely a deer. That was really cool. Yes, I got an awesome shot of some deer, guys. Well, I definitely just wanted to see what was around my camp. I wasn't sure. But yeah, it was definitely a bunch of deer that were bedded near my camp. Oh man, there's still one laying down right there. How cool is that? This deer has no idea what the heck is going on. Oh, she's blowing. Warning the rest of the crew. Well, the food's in here, so. This last watch are definitely gonna come out, guys. She's not happy. She's sending out a warning, communicating with the rest of the herd that there's danger in the area. Which is pretty cool. This deer over here just says, I don't care. If I die, that's all right. Oh, wow. There's more deer. There's deer all over the place. Guys, I'm surrounded by deer. This is going to be awesome. Cool. That was awesome, guys. I can't believe that happened. There's deer all over the place. And they don't care that I'm here. Well, those deer do, but the other ones just don't seem to really mind my presence, so. I'm excited, guys. These deer just don't really seem to mind me. They're just chilled out, bedded down here in the creek bottom. And then I guess they typically come out in my yard at midnight, two or three in the morning, and eat the grass out of the yard. But yeah. That's pretty cool, guys. Yeah, those deer are right over there, but I don't think we'll be able to see them.
it was kind of strange how some of the deer didn't react to the rest of the herd when they did the wheeze or whatever you want to call it, the snort. Whenever the doe was blowing at the rest of the deer, it seemed like the deer that were further off to the left just didn't care. And that's how it's been like all day. Like they don't care that I'm here. It's no big deal. They're just going to chill out. But it kind of reminded me of a story that a guest told on the channel previously. They said the Sasquatch or whatever it was came up to the house and the dogs just didn't even react. The dogs were asleep the whole time, which is kind of weird. All right, I gotta change this battery out. Dang it. As soon as I start recording. You can hear little footsteps all around. You can hear the little critters moving. The only problem is the wind. The wind won't stop. Come on, Sasquatch. Don't let me down. Seems like my batteries just keep dying left and right. It's getting old. Man, I am smelling skunk hardcore. I thought I smelled it earlier. Mm. Hopefully not. See if anything's behind me. You guys want to know a dream of mine? I would love to go elk hunting one day. That would be awesome. Whoa. Hardcore skunk. Man, it smells like a skunk. Really, really bad. Dang it. I hope I didn't get sprayed. Why would you do that, you little... Maybe there's a Sasquatch around. I doubt it. That skunk's gonna catch a nine because I don't play that. I didn't do anything to him. <laughs> All right. Yeah, skunk definitely. Definitely went off.
I'm not seeing anything on the thermal. I'm not smelling a skunk anymore either. Hey, they do call them the skunk ape, so you never know. I am in the area of a Sasquatch. Or I am in a Sasquatch's area. Maybe it pissed them off that I'm chilling out here. Who knows? Woo! Thought I saw something. It freaked me out. <laughs> I didn't know what it was. It was just a limb. It looked like a horse. Ooh, what was that? Got some dogs barking. My hands are freezing. Alright, the wind calmed down. Maybe we'll be able to hear something. Oh yeah, it really calmed down. And here it comes again. I'm just grateful to be out here. It's a blessing, honestly. Just getting tired of doing the same crap every day. This thing's moving on its own now. Hmm. It says it's leveled. When I look away, I feel like this thing's moving and it, like I have to look back. It's freaking me out. <laughs> Are you moving on your own? the hell's going on here yeah it's not leveled cool just set it to the left let it work its way no there it goes You can see the stars tonight, but it's still kind of foggy out, which is a bummer, but at least it's not raining. It's supposed to rain tomorrow. But yeah, I was just sitting around reading the comments and there's a lot of positive people out there and I really appreciate it. Thank you everyone for wishing me a safe night and I really appreciate it. I want to give a shout out to um, Leanne Smith. I just read your comment and I really appreciate it. I don't think I'm going to stay warm tonight, <laughs> but I'm going to try to. Also, um, Bender Bender, dude from Texas, Wendy True, and Ryan Smith. There's a lot of people. Andy from Canada. Sean, which we did a documentary. I appreciate you guys for watching all the time. There's all kinds of people out there. Many more. Kathy, thank you for the donations. And everybody else that's donated to the channel. There's a lot of people that's donated. And I wouldn't have the gear that I have if it wasn't for you guys so i really appreciate it i wouldn't be able to afford that and yeah really touches my heart that you guys took time out of your life took money out of your life to help me out which is amazing um we have the thermal the night vision the parabolic all kinds of audio recorders we have a new audio recording system and separate from the old audio recorders. We got good cameras, still working on the drone license. It's just, it's really hard to manage the channel and 
do the classes. It's been mentally tough on me. <laughs> But I'm catching up, I really am, and we're gonna get the drone license soon. What I want now, what would I want? <laughs> if I could get more equipment, I would like to get a G lens, one of the big white ones. I think it's like 70 to 200 millimeters. I think that's what it is, but it's for wildlife and you can take amazing photos of wildlife the only problem is it's two thousand dollars that's a lot of money i need to start like a gofundme so i can afford that um the lens and an e-bike i really want a quiet cat e-bike i really think that it'll allow me to get to all these different areas without driving a vehicle four-wheeler or a side-by-side and they're quiet. I mean, you set a GoPro up on that thing or a 360 camera, you're bound to catch something. And you'll get into these areas where the wildlife didn't hear you come in and you were able to get back there super fast. It's hard to carry a bunch of gear miles back and have energy to do anything else. <laughs> but I'm managing with the camcorder because it's got zoom. It's got a decent lens. It just doesn't have the focus like the G lens that I want. And um, obviously a vehicle, I'm driving the vehicle in or just walking everywhere I need to go. I have the kayak. The only problem with that is I'm afraid that if I leave the kayak on the bank, somebody's gonna steal it or if I camp and go explore, someone's gonna steal my stuff. So there is a downside by, you know, with camping by yourself and doing research on your own. A lot of danger, but it's fun. I love it. But yeah, I think I'm gonna turn in for the night. It's almost midnight. I need sleep. I wanna be able to edit this video in the morning and hopefully make some phone calls. I got some people that have been waiting on me for like a couple weeks, maybe a month, I don't know. But I'm gonna try to get a hold of them, see what's up. And we've already touched base. I just wanna be able to get some interviews in, some new interviews and see what's out there. Yeah guys, I appreciate everybody for watching, the subscribers, the members, and just people who tune in and out and watch the channel really means a lot all right time to crawl into the hammock looks super cozy let me know what you guys think do you like that do you like that it's kind of a weird question to ask but yeah i'll let you guys know if um anything happens i'll try to turn on the camera if bigfoot comes out but if he doesn't whatever check this out guys this is the snug pack cocoon and it goes around the hammock it's like a sleeping bag for the hammock but yeah look at that i'll be warm tonight yep just wanted to show you guys that thought it was awesome